Okay, chapter six is on momentum and impulse and conservation of momentum. So first of all, I want to start by defining momentum. It's a property of moving things, and it means inertia in motion. More specifically, it's the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. Here's an example of a great big super tanker. They actually cut off the engines of a super tanker like this when it's still 25 kilometers away from the port. And that's because it contains a lot of momentum. If it's moving, it's going to keep moving unless there's some outside force to, to slow it down. Examples, uh, a moving boulder has more momentum than a little stone that would be rolling at the same speed. And a faster boulder has more momentum than a slower boulder. And a boulder which is sitting at rest has no momentum. Another concept in this chapter is impulse. Impulse is the product of force and time. So an equation is uh, impulse equals force times time. Example, a brief force applied over a short time interval produces a smaller change in momentum than the same force applied over a longer time interval. This is going to change something's momentum. And here again, F is a force applied to an object, and T is the time interval over which that force is applied. Another example is if you push with the same force for twice the amount of time, you impact the imp twice the impulse, and so you produce twice the change in momentum. So, summing up, the greater the impulse exerted on something, the greater the change in momentum. And the equation for that is sometimes called the impulse momentum theorem. Impulse equals delta mv, or the change in mv, where m times v is the momentum. So, if you want to increase something's momentum, you want to apply the greatest force for as long as possible. Uh, so you're extending the, the time of contact, that uh, t in f times t. And this is why you follow through. This is both true uh, both for golf and for baseball. When you follow through with your swing, you are applying your force for a greater amount of time to the ball. And so you change its momentum by even more. Impulse can also be used to decrease momentum. And if you extend the time over which the uh, momentum is being reduced, then you can reduce the force. So, for example, this bungee jumper, if it was, if the, if this was a very uh, rigid rope, then it would be a short amount of time to reduce the momentum to zero, um, to not hit the bottom, and that would create a great force, very high force on the uh, on the legs. But if the bungee is stretchy, then you reduce the momentum to zero over a longer time, and so the force is less. So this is also why if a car is out of control, it's better to hit a haystack than a concrete wall. Okay, the physics reason is it's the same impulse either way. You have to stop. Uh, so reduce the momentum from mv to zero. But the force is different because the time is different. So here the truck hits the hay, it has some large velocity and some mass, and the time of collision is large, so the force can be relatively small. If it's going with the same speed and hits a brick wall, the time for it to stop is very small, and so the force required there is very large. So you can also decrease uh, momentum over a short time, so a short time interval produces large force. The example here is this karate expert uh, hits her hand or her arm and her hand against these bricks and so she her hand stops in a very short amount of time because the bricks are so um, rigid and brittle that it provides a very very large force and this force is enough actually to break the bricks so the opposite of this is that if you increase the time you can decrease the force so if you are bending your knees when you land when, uh, from a large jump, this decreases the, the force in your knees. And in boxing, similarly, you can ride with a punch. If someone punches you and you let your head go backwards, that increases the time and so decreases the force of the punching. 
but if you stand very rigidly, you can decrease the time, but that'll increase the force in your face and it hurts more. So bouncing is when not only do you stop the momentum, you also reverse it. So consider uh, a falling flower pot. If you impul uh, provide an impulse to reduce the momentum to zero and then throw the flower pot up again, you provide an additional impulse. And so this double impulse occurs when something is bouncing. And that's why these uh, Pelton wheels are designed uh, to uh, produce a greater impulse to turn this wheel by actually bouncing the water upwards. Not only does it stop it, but it reverses the momentum, and this requires twice the impulse and, and exerts twice the impulse on the wheel itself. So the law of conservation of momentum is that if there's no external force, then the momentum of a system is unchanged. And so this anim animation shows a cannon uh, firing a cannonball. So the force on the cannonball inside the cannon is it has an equal and opposite force to the cannonball on, on the cannon. And so there's only internal forces there. And therefore, the system of the cannon plus cannonball has the same momentum before and after. And so since the cannon and ball has less mass, it goes with a higher speed, but this cannon has the same momentum, higher mass, and it goes to the left with a lower speed. Some more examples. Uh, internal molecular forces within a baseball come in pairs, cancel each other out, and so they have no effect on the momentum of, of a flying baseball. Uh, this is the same if you're pushing against the car's dashboard. It has no effect on the momentum of the whole car plus you. And if we look at these uh, pool examples, you have an eight ball, the white ball hitting um, the cue ball hitting the eight ball. Uh, it depends what you choose as the system. So this first system is an external force acts on the eight ball system. And so its momentum increases. But if you look at your system as just being the cue ball and an external force acts on the cue ball and changes its momentum. But if you look at your system as being cue ball plus the eight ball, then there's no external forces and so the momentum inside this collision is conserved. This is generally true for collisions, is that in the absence of external forces, the net momentum uh, before the collision equals the net momentum after the collision. You can write it up this way, net mb before equals net mb after. And that's true for these two fish. The fish make up a system which has the same momentum uh, just before lunch and just after lunch. So collisions are important because they conserve momentum, but there's two kinds of collisions, elastic and inelastic. So an elastic collision occurs when the colliding objects rebound without uh, creating any heat. So here the green ball comes along, hits the white ball, and it flies away. Or the green ball comes along and the white ball goes to the left. They collide and rebound in opposite directions. Another one is if they're both going in the same direction, but the green ball is going faster, and when they collide, <clears throat> that extra speed will get transferred to the white ball. These are all examples of elastic collisions. An inelastic coll collision occurs when the colliding objects do result in some deformation or the creation of heat, but they still conserve momentum. So this animation shows a single car moving at 10 meters per second, colliding with another car of the same mass, which is initially at rest. So from the conservation of momentum, you've got uh, mass times 10, velocities before, equals 2 mass times the velocity after, and the velocity after you find is, is 5. And just during the collision, some heat is released, and so the energy is not conserved here. 10 meters per second, poof, away goes some energy, and now they're moving along at 5 meters per second. There are more complicated collisions that can happen in two dimensions. Sometimes the, the colliding objects are not moving in the same direction, in which case now you can create a parallelogram of the vectors because the, the velocity has a vector, so the momentum is also a vector, and add it that way. So here you have car B going to the north, car A going to the east. The combined momentum is to the northeast. Explosions also conserve momentum. Here's an example of a, of a firecracker. It's going down at first and then explodes into two pieces. And when you add the momentum of the two pieces, it's also going down. 